Finally, it rises. Hey, hey, it's ODB, the Lincoln Addict. I recently mentioned bring a trailer here with some of the recent sales going back to the 64, which I did a review on. What I'm going to do now is take a look at the 63 Lincoln Continental Convertible. Now, I do believe that this guy maybe had Nathan do some work on the car. He may be friends with him. Many of you in the Lincoln community know Nathan Wilson from the kind of greater Orlando area out on that side of the state. But this 63 sold for 63000 And uh, let's take a look at it. Uh, what you can see here is it's blue over black leather upholstery. So it's um, blue paint, uh, real nice color. Um, we go into the car was acquired by the seller in 2021 and retrimming the interior. Um, you can see some of the work that they're stating that was done to it. Uh, it technically is the Nocturne Blue, uh, the H code, and um, the paint looks really good on it. The top was serviced under the current ownership, and they replaced some of the limit switches and wiring. We can see here it has the black interior, which I think looks really, really nice. It has 20-inch wheels, which obviously can be changed if it's not to your liking. We can see that... Uh, everything from an aesthetic perspective pretty much is right in line with what you would expect. The steering wheel obviously is going to stick out for the most part that that's not a factory kind of wrap. Um, you could easily have uh, the steering wheel redone. There's a few people out there that do those. And the floor mats are obviously not um, correct if you wanted to change those. Again, that's getting pretty picky. What we can see here is the odometer shows... 500 or excuse me it shows 8500 miles we also see that it does not have uh, air conditioning so a couple things number one is it does have a fan shroud and typically and i believe even into the later years if the car didn't have air conditioning it wouldn't typically have a fan shroud but depending on where you live we have all um been known to discuss or talk about this or add this to our cars, uh, you will see people that will add the fan shroud even if it doesn't have air conditioning. And again, um, there's various reasons for that. You know, some will swear by the fact that having the fan shroud, depending on where you live, um, can help keep the car a little bit cooler because you're directing that air right across the radiator. So uh, that's something to kind of point out. We can see it does have the fact this is the factory steering uh, pump reservoir. So that is there. And uh, we do see it has the single reservoir. You've heard me talk about that would be a potential good upgrade if you weren't looking to remain 100% kind of factory accurate. Most are not concerned with the factory, uh, factory accuracy. Um, I know there's some people out there that are, but for the most part, you know, upgrading this to a dual master in my opinion, would be a good thing. We can see it has a yellow top battery. These uh, I've always had great success with the Optima batteries. Some swear by them, some don't. Uh, in my uh, Lincoln my, that I drive more often, um, I have kind of an older, uh, I think it's a 27F battery, but uh, I've always had good success with uh, Optima, contrary to what some people will say. Um, what we can see here is it's kind of hard to tell in this photo. Uh, what I would tell you is this looks kind of like an unrestored, um, uh, I don't want to say patina, but this is kind of the look and feel that you'll see under a car depending on where it came from, where there wasn't really any kind of uh, maintenance done. I don't want to say maintenance. I, I would say cleanup. So oftentimes you guys will hear me talk about, you'll see a car and you're like, wow, it looks nice underneath. And I can kind of tell that someone will go and scrape the bottom and they'll kind of shoot it with some black paint. And that's not, that's not always a bad thing. Um, my 64 came with a bunch of undercoating because it came from Indiana and um, they didn't drive it in the winter, but I guess back in whatever year, they just caked that thing with undercoating and it was kind of ugly. But when I went to scrape it all off, it had really made sure that the car wasn't subjective to, you know, the salts and things like that, even though they really didn't drive in the winter, it basically protected it. 
what I could see here is basically what they've stated uh, here where it says corrosion is visible on underbody components. So that's kind of the look and feel that I get from here. Um, you kind of see that like, wow, like I could clean this up. I could shoot at paint. I don't see anything that's necessarily rusting through. But I would say if this had been a car that you were looking at, you definitely want to get eyes on it. You want to make sure that there's no rust involved and whatnot. So this photo only really shows us the cosmetic side of things. And we kind of go, yeah, it's a car that isn't really restored. Uh, I'm not going to break down all of this, but a couple of things. Uh, the reason why is because they break it down right here. Uh, 11 is the key thing, Boston, Massachusetts ordering district. So the DSO, the key thing here is you could draw the lineage back to, you know, it, it kind of came from the Northeast. And if this car had been driven during the harsh winters and things like that, that's where you start to get, you know, get concerned that it was subjected to the elements, uh, the salt on the roads, the snow and all of that stuff. But again, that's probably why we're seeing visually this kind of look and feel, if you will, underneath it, not saying that it can't be cleaned up. And again, I think the big thing is here, we don't see any evidence of rust and things like that other than the surface. But uh, again, I would want to investigate a little bit more. We see 15 E was, excuse me, May 15th production date. Uh, you, again, if you, if you get down to the, the fine details, you'll see obviously gold leather upholstery, which would have been a cool color. I think against the nocturne blue paint, uh, that could obviously be changed, but I think the interior, many people like black and I think it's a good color to go to because you're typically going to have someone that's going to buy the car and just want to get in and cruise it. Uh, they're not going to want to spend, you know, four or five, 10 grand, uh, if you will, to kind of just immediately change the interior unless you kind of have the money and that's something you just have to do. Now we've seen Nathan um, Wilson and I said, again, I'm bringing his name up because I do believe that he either knows the seller or something to that effect. But in the property uh, here, we've seen Nathan do different photos and videos of cars, uh, including with drone footage here. So it's kind of a cool little thing. You don't really see a lot of people that maybe either don't have a drone or they don't think to do this. Um, so it's kind of cool to see that. Um, what you could see here is the, uh, you know, being around custom cars a long time. Let me try to get this to go away. I guess it's not going to. Being around custom cars a long time, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of wheels. These aren't my favorite wheels, but if you look here, the rotor itself kind of looks a little crusty. Um, just reinforcing that one, it does have the factory rear drum brakes, I think is the big thing. Kind of a slideshow, if you will. Nathan always does a great job, in my opinion, of showcasing the top working. And this is a key thing. Obviously, if it's a convertible, he has the remote switch installed. He's more than capable of installing that. And that's what they're basically doing. They're off camera, or Nathan is, or someone is. And they're showcasing the top working. I do believe this is sped up just a hair which I do that as well on social media uh, because it does take, as John Cashman will reinforce, about 60 seconds, give or take, for the top cycle to go, you know, hit the switch, beginning to end up, beginning to end down. It's about 60 seconds each way, if that makes sense. You can see the trunk looks very appealing with um, the, the carpet kit, if you will, that's been reinstalled or installed at some point, and we have a driving photo or video rather down good old uh, interstates in Florida. We can easily tell that. Uh, so about 2 minutes and 22 seconds of video. What I see from this car is something that's very solid, something that's very nice. You can more than likely get right in. Obviously, if you're kind of obsessive compulsive and if you're anything like me where, you know, you would want to get this car for a good deal and then eventually maybe uh, paint the bottom, detail the bottom, you know, do some of that. This is certainly a car that you could have done that with. Now, I'm a big fan of the color blue, so certainly uh, seeing this car in blue uh, is something that that I love. The trim work looks nice as well. And my opinion is the majority of folks that might be looking to purchase this, they might decide they want to change the wheels. Um, and certainly you can do that. That's pretty simple. You can go with the choice of something like what I run Colorado custom wheels. They make the, the Lincoln replica wheels and, uh, that, uh, they look exactly like the factory hubcaps, except for they're made out of built aluminum. 
but that's is that's about as it's probably easier than pa- repainting the walls on your house uh, if you bought a house and you didn't like the color. So this looks like Nathan here. So again, we got some evidence of Nathan Wilson. Uh, I've been to been not necessarily to his place, but I've hung out with him before, and uh, he's a very nice guy, very knowledgeable. Uh, as you guys know, check out his channel if you haven't already. You can see here, obviously, the doors have been. Um, uh, you know, re- redone here. And this looks pretty clean on the inside of the doors. Uh, the upholstery is what I was trying to say. And then some of these pieces, I don't remember of Detroit deviant, uh, James, who's also out in the greater Orlando area. Uh, he makes different pieces like this. I don't uh, know off the top of my head if those came from him, but certainly a very, very good presentation. I think of a car and, um, that is black there. I thought in the video it looked gray, but either way, um, we can see what we see there. Uh, keep in mind, up until 64, so in 64 it changes, but the spare tire is housed right here. Many of you might be accustomed to seeing the trunks on the 6465 where the spare tire has kind of that spare tire spare tire well where the tire sits down here. That did not start until 64, so that's why you see this impression here. That's certainly where the spare tire goes. What we can see, the other point that I wanted to make is we can see it does have the three-port Carter uh, fuel pump on it, which is a good thing versus the two-port, especially if this car was going to remain in Florida where these photos were taken. We can see for the most part, everything's kind of clean in here. You know, your engine doesn't have to be super clean. It's really like Blair always tells me it's what's on the inside. Now, underneath these cars, typically, especially in the front end, you will see exactly what you're seeing here, kind of the grit and grime. These cars are known to leak. And um, it's very tough to fix all the leaks on these cars. A lot of people just don't really care because you're going to drive it some, you're going to park it, you know, you're going to check your fluids every so often. But if it's something that drives you crazy, you can certainly spend the time and money uh, to try to remedy those as much as you can. You can pull the engine, have it resealed and whatnot. It does appear that it has the, um, we don't, I haven't talked about this a lot, but uh, these uh, three uh, isolators are, are are from the factory, and what basically is done is they're like a rubber isolator, and these are actually the steel ones that a few different folks make, including Detroit Deviant James, uh, who was the first guest on Lincoln Attic Podcast. Uh, he makes these, and what you end up doing is this was an over engineering thing that Lincoln did. You typically re- will replace the one, the two, the three. Uh, with these hardened, uh, you know, steel or steel, if you will, um, and versus the the rubber isolator. So you can see that that's been done. Now, James also makes, if I remember correctly, he makes a kit that replaces right here. So if you look, there's this uh, opening, uh, and this is where the throttle linkage uh, goes to, or, or in this case, the shift linkage. Um, uh, and you basically, what you, you can do is you can buy from Detroit Deviant's website, uh, if you wanted to replace that. So I wanted to mention it. But pretty standard underneath here. Yes, I totally get that it's not super clean. But you have to keep in mind, too, that uh, this car, you know, it, it has some room for improvement if that's something you want to do. If you want to go and detail this to the nines, you certainly can. Um, I would also pay attention. You know, we saw that rear shot kind of looking forward. Uh, but this, again, when you start to see a lot of this, you know, you're going to see that normal kind of undercoat, the grit and grime and things like that. And although that may be sometimes something you go, hey, I want to clean up, it's often something that with it being on there, it's helped to kind of protect it over the course of time. So um, this, I think, angle looks a lot better. Um, other than like up in here, this is more than likely not rust. It might just be some surface rust or a little bit of corrosion, as they noted. But you can kind of see in here is where, based upon the light kind of coming in and all of this, it almost looks like um, it looks worse than I think that it is. And I think it's the light that's hitting it because when we look here and you kind of look back, it looks like what you see under a lot of these cars. Um, 
it will keep going. Uh, I did see a few things where there's kind of some wires, like what you're seeing right here is you have a wire that's snaked in here and things like that. You know, uh, those are the first things I try to go and kind of take out and fix uh, if you can. Uh, the exhaust obviously has been redone at some point. That may be something that you would want to redo on this car. Um, and you can see the the normal kind of stuff underneath. It doesn't look horrible there. We'll wrap this up in just a minute here. I just wanted to go through a couple more photos. Again, you're seeing the bottom of the floor pans. Without that light coming in, I think this is a better view of it, which kind of ties into a little bit of the corrosion that they mentioned. You have the uh, the plate, which is a key, which we talked a little bit about. You see the top up there, and there you go. So what I would tell you is I think at 63000 it was a strong number, but we've continued to see these cars go up in value. So I think someone did get a, a good buy overall. Um, when we look here, um, this guy says, I hate to use the word iconic because it's inappropriate, often used. However, this car, along with the 59 Cadillac Eldorado, is a true American automotive design. Um, I don't disagree at all. It's very easy to identify the AC versus non-AC in the cars. Uh, no compressor under the hood. Uh, Non-AC cars have no dash vents and different HVAC controls and don't control the AC. That was one thing. Um, that I don't talk about enough. There are some of the interior differences, if you will, um, if it's a non-AC car. And we'll just scroll down here and look at a few more. There's no denying that the vinyl interior looks very well done, the top two, and they kind of go into that. So that's a good thing, something I don't point out very often, that it is hard to tell if the interior was redone in vinyl or in leather in a lot of uh places now so this person was uh they had asked it appears and then philip chimed in and said the seats are vinyl so the point that i was trying to make is you you often can't just unless you're maybe an interior guy or you know uh your interiors uh it's hard for me it would be hard for me to look at it and go oh yeah that's not leather that's a vinyl so that is a good question to ask not that it's a deal breaker certainly but you know, if someone had paid for the leather interior, it's going to cost more money. There's, you know, there's more investment in the car, but certainly I highly doubt anybody's going to go and change that right away. You might leave that for years and decide you want to go with a different interior. I guess in hindsight, looking here, I can kind of tell it is vinyl, but um, out of the gate, it is kind of to, 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 kind of hard to tell. Um it is worth noting now that I'm just seeing this, the window switches. I don't know why it looks like, I don't know if they're black window switches or if there was a photo. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's what it was. Nathan may have done some work on this car, but I know there's a lot of people out there that have, have come up with other remedies instead of spending, you know, 50 to upwards of $100 per switch sometimes to rebuild them. Um, there's folks that come up with options like this. And you can use a newer style switch. The only downfall of that is, you know, the aesthetics of it. So, again, when I was looking at this photo, I was like, wait a minute, there's no window switches here. Uh, did they relocate them or what did they do? But what, uh, that was something I missed earlier. And certainly they just put like a newer toggle switch, kind of uh, black, low profile, not the end of the world. I think it's kind of nice. But, again, it's going to go down to your preference. If you're looking for a car that's all factory accurate, um, certainly a car like this may not be what you're looking for, but I would say, uh, that someone got a nice buy on it. Um, it, there's a little bit of room for potential making it your own, so to speak. If you want to detail it to the nines, maybe change the wheels, uh, do some additional detail work, but this proves we're continuing to see strong prices for the convertibles and, uh, congratulations to Philip and Nathan, um, out in the greater Orlando area, the land it might be. Uh, shout out to everyone that continues to watch these videos. Uh, hopefully you'll watch them all the way through. It does help the channel. Uh, and with that being said, stay on the rise and we'll hit you guys soon with more content, including videos here on YouTube and Lincoln Attic podcast. Take care, everyone.